What's up, y'all? I am kind of on a Transformer high right now, and for some reason, I just feel like I gotta get my Transformer opinions out right now, because look at those views. I cannot deny the people what they want. So today we're gonna be talking about Megatron and specifically the Bayverse series Megatron. In the Bayverse series, I think we can agree that Megatron wasn't written to his full potential. In the first movie, Bay captured the ferocity of Megatron very well, but that's just a portion of the character. I feel like I'm yelling. His motive was a pretty standard villain motive, wanting to turn my Honda Accord into a Decepticon. Yep. That sounds nefarious to me, but Bay missed out on some of the most important things that make him such a great villain. Megatron is fierce, determined, manipulative, and maybe flat out insane. Megatron is that leader who carefully crafts out his plans and takes advantage of the skills of his Decepticons, but he isn't doing it just for world domination. Well, technically it is world domination, but he doesn't want power just for the sake of power. He wants power in order to change his planet for the better of all Cybertronians, and Michael Bay rarely captured that. In the first movie, the whole turn cars into Decepticons doesn't even make sense since he landed on Earth a couple thousand years ago. And I, I think it was the BC era? I have to go back and look. I'm not... 100% sure right now. So what if during the scene where Megatron and Sam were on the roof, Megatron tells Sam that he wants the Allspark in order to rebuild his destroyed planet. Sam will respond stating that the Autobots told him about his plan and Megatron would deny it saying that he has no reason to destroy Earth, he only wants to go home and fix his world. What if that whole time he acted like he was done with the fighting between the Autobots and Decepticons? This could mess with Sam and the audience mentally because we originally thought his intentions were to destroy the Earth, and now we're challenged with the idea that Megatron might just be here to save his world. This would show the audience just how manipulative Megatron really is. People, not just Michael Bay, forget that he is also a war general. In the first movie, you never really see him talk to his subordinates other than speaking to Starscream that one time. In fact, you rarely see Megatron have conversations with any of his Decepticons other than Soundwave or Starscream. And Laserbeak in the third movie. What if instead of speaking generic dialogue, he comes up with a strategy in order to surround the Autobots when talking to Starscream? This will show how quick he is to come up with a battle strategy since he was frozen in ice for thousands of years. But of course, Michael Bay just makes him a powerhouse with no clear motive. He doesn't even state his own motive inside the movie. The Autobots state his motive in the movie. Another very important aspect that Michael Bay failed to touch on was Megatron and Optimus' relationship. That's the biggest thing in the entire Transformer franchise, is the relationship between Optimus and Megatron, and they barely speak to each other. In the first movie, Megatron would say something, and then Optimus would say something, and then they would go back to fighting or a Megatron would say something and then they would continue fighting, or Optimus would say something and then they would continue fighting. It's you and me, Megatron. No, it's just me, Prime. It's the future of our race not worth a single human life. Uh, get up! You'll never stop at one. I'll take you all on! Megatron Prime! Join them in extinction! Who would you be without me, Prime? Time to find out. It's like they're speaking at each other rather than having an actual conversation. Neglecting dialogue between each other causes the weight of their rivalry to diminish. The relationship is so strong that Megatron is the only one who is allowed to destroy Optimus. He views it as absolute disrespect to him and his pride if anyone attempts to kill Optimus. That's why while the forest battle is the best scene in the entire series, to me, it's out of character for him to ask for help fighting Optimus. He wants that glory for himself. I understand he was getting his butt handed to him on an Energon platter, but why is it that he's this weak to begin with compared to the first movie? In the first movie, he was tossing Optimus around like a sex doll. Now he's getting scrapped alongside two other Decepticons? Megatron would never allow himself to become so rusty that he needs to call upon help fighting the mighty Optimus Prime. Megatron is someone who feels that he absolutely needs to be in charge. How dare someone try and command the Decepticons in his absence? 
What a death sentence. And to think you actually believed you could take over as leader of the Decepticons. You couldn't lead a parade. But in the second movie, he's revived and reunites with his superior, who is the Fallen, the first Decepticon. And I gotta be honest, I hate this. Megatron being told what to do by someone else just leaves a bad taste in my ass. It's so out of character for Megatron, the man who refuses to be anyone's slave or take orders from anyone is now being shown taking orders from someone. And before y'all nerds talk about, but in the Prime, he kneeled to Unicron and in the comments, I don't want to hear that. I, know, I didn't like it in Prime, I don't like it in the Bayverse series. His goal is to be at the top. He's trying to take control of an entire planet, and if there is someone who is above him telling him what to do, that means Megatron is just a pawn, which makes his whole role as the big bad villain obsolete. My suggestion would be to remove the Fallen completely because he was trash anyways. My problem with Dark of the Moon Megatron was that he got nerfed really badly and treated like the trash you kick under your bed and pretend the stench of war crimes doesn't exist. Cause everybody else might be afraid of you out here boy, but I ain't fucking afraid of you, I'ma let you- what? I'll snatch your forehead the fuck And that's all I have to say about that Megatron because he was just getting bitched the whole time and he had half a face and he didn't really do much except for stand there and then sneak attack Sentinel and then die. That's it. That's pretty much it. That's his whole story right there. Now, Galvatron is a unique case because this is far from Galvatron. Galvatron is supposed to feel like a different person but act like Megatron. He feels different because how strong he is. Kind of like how Cell in his second form feels different from final form Cell but acts the same. Galvatron is just Megatron in a different body but less involved in the battle. Stinger was more involved in the battle than Galvatron was. He fought Optimus once and didn't fight another Autobot for the rest of the movie. What was he doing while Hound was getting jumped? Best believe 07 Megatron would have been in the front of that fight. Throughout the final battle, he should have been commanding his troops to attack from certain angles at least. What if instead of that two-headed shockwave fighting Hound, Galvatron fights Hound and Bumblebee as Cage shoots him from a building? During the scene, Stinger can even attack Bumblebee to add more attention to the safety of Hound while also acknowledging Stinger's entrance since he wasn't shown in the fight earlier and we just hard cut the Stinger wailing on Bumblebee anyways. My final issue with Galvatron is that he accepts the name Galvatron. If Megatron hates humans, why would he accept any name that they give him? This right here is an easy fix. All you have to do is have the humans name Galvatron something else. And then when he wakes up, he decides to call himself Galvatron. He could be named Bot56382173257684. Well, who cares, bro? Just name him something else. And then he could just come up with a name Galvatron. And that's all I gotta say about Megatron. His arc ended with Galvatron. And there's no more Megatrons out there. Hopefully, we get a new Megatron for the Rise of Beasts movie that's coming out. But until then, we don't have another Megatron. There is absolutely no other Megatron here. There is no other Megatron. There is no other Megatron. There is no, there is no Megatron. No, that's it. That's all of them. That's, please, please. <sighs> Since it's my last point, I might as well talk about the last night. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I was really reluctant to talk about this version of Megatron because this is not Megatron at all. <sighs> what is there to say that hasn't already been said? He may as well have been a different Transformer. He could have been Tarn. He has no resemblance to the other Megatrons at all. He's negotiating with humans, he's retreating, he's throwing tantrums, and he's losing every fight. He even shows up randomly to take the staff to Quintessa like he's that kid in your group that doesn't do anything but puts his name on the project. I don't know how to fix this without changing the whole movie so I suggest that we just throw him away with the Fallen. Why is he negotiating? Why the hell is he negotiating? Oh my gosh bruh, end the video.